Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing a fake home ossification surgery in a case which had a mid dilated pupil. By now the side port incisions have been made and we are injecting 2% HPMC into the anterior chamber and coating the cornea with the same viscoelastic substance. So after completing a triplanar 2.8 mm clear corneal incision, we are raising a capsule of flap with a 26 gauge bent cystitome and beginning the process of capsulorexis formation. So with the utrada forceps, I am manipulating the capsular flap concentric to the pupil margin and I am taking extreme care that the capsular flap does not have a radial extension as retrieving such an extension would be very difficult in this small pupil. Once the capsular axis is complete, we go ahead with the cortical cleaving hydrodissection and nucleus rotation. So I plan to begin the case as a stop and chop procedure because I thought it was a grade 1 to 2 nucleus but as I am beginning the sculpting I noticed that the nucleus is slightly denser and then I switched techniques and I thought that I'll do a direct chop. So I rotated the nucleus 180 degrees and attempted a direct chop from the other side. Here you can see that I did not have a very good hold on the nucleus and I lost the vacuum so I attempt the second chop at another place and I am successful in separating the two heminuclei. Thereafter I chop each of the heminuclei in a similar manner. Friends, I'm using the Oatly Cataract Sphaco machine and it is my opinion that this machine is an excellent machine when you're trying to do a direct chop maneuver, not so much as when you're trying to do the sculpting in the initial stop and chop surgery. For this particular case, I'm using slightly lower Faco settings. I am at 50% Faco power, pulsed at 30 hertz with a 60% cool time and I'm using a vacuum of 350 millimeters of mercury with an aspiration flow rate of 35 cc per minute. So after the first piece has been emulsified, it's easy to prolapse the rest of the pieces from out of the bag to perform phaco emulsification. Difference you'll notice that the plane of surgery that we are doing in this case is above that of the iris. So this is done deliberately because of a small pupil aperture I'm not so confident of doing an in the bag phaco emulsification because I am afraid of causing a posterior capsule or rupture. So because of a smaller pupil, I'd like to prolapse these nuclear fragments into the anterior chamber for performing phaco emulsification. Nevertheless, it goes without saying that you have to coat your corneal endothelium very well with a dispersive viscoelastic, which I have done in this case using 2% HPMC. you'll notice that the wine manipulator is a very handy instrument when it comes to maneuvering or manipulating the nuclear fragments. Additionally, it also can be used to further micro fragment these individual nuclear fragments as you've just seen me doing 
and also it can prevent the pupil margin from coming into the FACO handpiece. You'll notice that because of a very small operator field, I am restricting my FACO tip to the very center of the operating field because I do not want to inadvertently cause any kind of iris trauma that would cause hyphema and increase post-operative inflammation. So the nucleus has been emulsified and now we go ahead with the cortex removal with the bimanual irrigation and aspiration. This is my personal choice and it's not necessarily a better technique than the coaxial one. It's just that I am more comfortable when I'm using a bimanual irrigation aspiration cannula. I was lucky not to encounter a floppy iris along with a small pupil because it is often seen that both of these entities come in pairs that you'd often see that the iris tends to come into the FACO probe or into the irrigation aspiration probe or it tends to run towards the main incision or the sideboard incisions but I was lucky that I did not encounter a floppy iris. Here we are demonstrating a hydro IOL implantation of a single piece acrylic hydrophilic IOL. After nudging the IOL into the bag, I'm using a Y manipulator to check the capsulorexis overlap over the optic and I am confident and I'm happy with what I'm seeing that the IOL is into the bag and snugly placed into the capsular bag. So this concludes the case my friends and if you have any questions I'll take them in the comment section below. Thanks for patiently watching this video. I hope you liked it. I'll see you in the next one.